Thank you for joining us at First Assembly of God Church in Clear Lake, California. Please welcome Rev. Lisa Kugler. Well, how's everybody doing tonight? All right, y'all look good. All right. It was really awesome to see pe- people come forward in obedience and give their testimony because it's not easy to get up here and talk and not even... You know, and not even have anything prepared. So I give them all a little bit of glory for that. So so my message tonight, Jacob made me a really great PowerPoint. He was late, but that's okay. I love him anyway. Um, And and my title, my message says, uh, Don't Let Fear Control You. And how many of you have experienced fear in the last couple of weeks coming against you? Oh, Oh, good. Then I have the right message because... I'm like, if I'm the only one going through this, Lord, well, you know, I don't know. Because I just go through a lot of stuff. We all know that. But anyway, so fear is false evidence appearing real. And fear seeks to steal your life and just drain your soul of everything that's in you. And the Lord doesn't want us to be mastered by fear, but he wants us to operate in, the, in our faith and walk out in victory against fear. No matter what's coming against us, no matter what we feel, we can go forward in Jesus' name. <clears throat> so one of the reasons the Bible gives us to fear not is because God is with us. So our first scripture is Psalms 23, 4. And this is just accumulation of stuff I've studied over the weekend because I wasn't really ready to give a message, and I wasn't sure I was coming tonight, and so God's good. But this is stuff that I've been studying because, you know, it's really easy for fear to seep in when you think you got a handle on it, and then all of a sudden these little things creep up and you don't even realize they're there. Then all of a sudden you're in a full-on attack of fear on your life, and you're like, what is wrong with me, right? So (laughs) David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. So David was going through something, and it was dark. And I want you to think about this for a second. When we go through something dark, there's no light, and light is truth. So when you get into your head, whether you opened a door to something, whether you sinned and committed you know, you got out of God's will, whatever, whatever the situation is and it's dark and you're going through something, you got to tell yourself, I will not fear because God is with me and his rod and his staff will comfort me. David had the biggest set of emotions of any person in that Bible. And you know, he went through stuff, he'd write about it in the Psalms. And what I get from this for my own self is that, you know, sometimes we can be going along thinking we're doing everything right, and all of a sudden we're in panic. Nothing makes sense. The unknown is happening. It's like my life is falling apart right now, but if I look to God, remind myself that he's with me, and get into the word, he's going to pull whatever I'm doing back into order to his will, give me the truth for the lie, and he's going to get me through that darkness to the other side. And that's what the point is here, is God is always with us. He never leaves us, and he never leaves us without guidance, okay? And so when fear comes on you for whatever reason, sometimes you feel left alone. You feel like God's not there to guide you, and you don't know what you're, you're supposed to do. Well, he's got you. He's going to guide you through the darkness, okay? So fear comes to us in all forms, worry, anxieties, reasoning. When you start reasoning something, oh my gosh, you could go off a cliff in your mind. Have you ever been there? Yeah, and it's hard to crawl back up once you get off that cliff. But God promises, he's like, if you just take my word and submit to my word, everything will make sense. So there are many people who are afraid of things. People have fear of sickness, I know this sounds weird, but like I was, didn't want to get sick, and then here I am getting sick. And there's other people that have real phobias of certain illnesses, right? Um, people are afraid of being jobless, of being a failure. People are afraid of having commitment, being committed to the Lord. What is that going to look like, right? I might just have my foot in. I don't know if I really want to give my all, right? Um, There's people who are afraid of heights, bugs. Just ask my son. He screams when he sees bugs. 
I had a, a tarantula crawl up on my shoe at the beach, and I just smashed it, and my husband's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm here for a week. This thing's going to come back. And that was the only spot I had to hang out in. So I just got rid of it, you know. I apologized to the Lord, but, you know, that's a real fear, being afraid of bugs. I mean, it's funny, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, some people are afraid of public speaking. You know, the list goes on and on and on. It's endless, right? But some fe fears are rational. Some are irrational, right? But regardless of where the fear comes from, it's from Satan, and it's designed to prevent you from going forward in whatever God has asked you to do, okay? However it comes, we don't need to have fear. We need to turn fear away in any capacity that it's operating in our life. So what are you afraid of? Praise God. You know, when I was 20 and 30, like, I don't think I was afraid of anything. Now I have, like, all these stupid fears that try to present themselves to me, and I'm thinking, what is that? I was afraid to go in a parasail, and then I find out Pastor and Kathy did, and I'm like, where did that come from? You know, I mean, heights, right? But you got to face your fear. You got to do some things afraid, all right? Amen? Amen. So um, what's, what overwhelms you and what steals your peace? That's something you need to think about tonight because you're not leaving with it. <laughs> the Lord wants to deal with it tonight. So not only is God with us, but God loves us. And this is a point that we, when we get into fear sometimes, and it's been there for a little while, we forget that God loves us. We forget that, well, we forget a lot of the truths because fear kind of cancels truth because we're listening to the lies, right? Um, but there comes a time when you need to focus on God's presence, that he's with you, and the focus on the fact that he loves you. And, you know, I got into a fear thing, you know, recently, and I'm thinking, I forgot that God loved me. And that's why I was reading through all this stuff. I'm like, you, it's just so easy. And then you feel so alone. You feel like, okay, how do I get out of this? And God's not going to show up. He, he may have come through for me before, but he's not coming through now, and I'm by myself to handle this. That's such a lie. So I want to encourage you tonight that God loves you unconditionally. Okay? There's no strings attached. There's nothing you have to do. You don't have to earn it. It's a free gift. And a lot of people don't realize that God loves them and that they don't have to perform to get him to love them, that they could just be okay right where they're at, mistakes and all, and that God still loves them and understands why they do things that they do and that he's still going to come through for them and make a way in the situation because his presence never leaves us, right? And he, his love never changes, and we can't be good enough to get his love. And um, 1 John 4, 9 says that, that um, we love because he first loved us. We don't do things to get God to love us. We do things because God loves us. <clears throat> he makes the first move on us, right? And we're the recipients, and then out of what he does for us, we give it back to him. So to show our gratitude. And then he gives us more love and more revelation and more understanding. And part of really knowing that God loves you is understanding that you're forgiven for your sins. So uh, 1 John 4.18, it says, There is no fear in love. Dread does not exist. But full-grown love that's made complete and perfect. That's my little add-in. Love turns fear out of doors and expels every trace of terror. When you're in sin, how many of you feel like you can't run to God, but that you run from God? I think all of us go through that. We're like, we're not good enough. We can't come close to God because we screwed up so much. And he's like, no, that's when you need to run to me because I have the answers. And I died for you so you could run to me so that there would be no barrier. And understanding his love for you means that you can run to him in your sin to get the redemption you need. So when you mess up, run to the Father for help, okay? Um, changing lanes. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Now, when, I, when I, w I had a big episode of fear a couple years ago, and I was driving, and I was almost in a panic attack, and I'm like, where are you, Lord? And I heard this in my spirit. I will not, I will not, I will not leave you helpless. And I was like, 
okay, I don't know where that's at in the Bible, but I know it's in the Bible because I've heard it somewhere. And this is the scripture that the Lord gave me. I went and looked it up later on, and I'm thinking, how does this apply to that situation, Lord? But there's a principle to be learned here, and it says this. Let your character or moral disposition be free from the love of money, including greed, harvest, lust, and craving for earthly possessions, okay? And be satisfied with what you have, for the Lord, the Lord God himself has said, I will never, or has said, I will not, in any way fail you, nor give up on, nor leave you without any support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down. Relax my hold on you, assuredly not. That's a pretty secure promise that whatever you're going through, the principle is that you can apply that to your life. God will not leave you helpless. And he makes it clear by saying it three times. But something to be learned here is that our minds can be so full of financial problems, so full of getting daily needs met, so full of everything that we don't have, everything that's not working out, that that brings on worry, that brings on anxiety, that opens the door to fear. And the Lord is like, you don't need to worry about any of that stuff. You just seek me first and I will add all these things to you. But we're human. But it also says in another scripture in Matthew that that's what the, the pagans go after. They go after the material possessions, but like the Lord says, we're not of that kingdom. We're of the kingdom of God. So we're to go after God and then he provides. He's the one that's going to give you the wisdom. But first of all, I think you need to get the peace so you can hear the course of action you need to take for your situation financially so he can get you the process straight in your head. Because when you're worried, you can't hear God and knock it. You're not even going to be sure you're going to believe that that's who's talking to you. Because you're so full of fear, believing all the lies that your life's falling apart and you're going to lose everything tomorrow. You know? So, you can apply this principle to any area of your life and you can rely on God that he never will fail you. Ever. So, he always comes through. May not be the way you want and in your timeline, but don't give up on God. Let him show you something new because he can think outside your box. So fear not. <clears throat> we are commanded to fear not like 360-something times in the Bible. That's one for like every day. So God wants us to know every day we're not to fear. It doesn't mean you won't feel fear or you won't have an attack of fear. And people think, oh, well, I've been delivered of this. Well, it doesn't mean it's not going to come back around and try to knock on your door. And sometimes it catches you off guard because it's looking for a place to get in. So just fear not. When it comes, you might feel it for a few days, but that doesn't mean you have to let it control you. And that's what this is talking about. So when fear comes, we're supposed to move forward in obedience regardless. That's what courage is. Courage is looking fear in the face and saying, I feel you, I know you're there, but I'm still going to do the right thing anyway. People are called to get up and speak and share their testimony. You don't think they have fear? They did it anyway, right? And there was a lady that had a social phobia in one of the books I read, and um, she was l missing out on her life because she was so bound in fear that she wouldn't leave her house, she wouldn't go out and make new friends. And um, the story said that her friend that she was sharing all these concerns with, and she was saying, I want to live. Then the lady said, go out and do it afraid. And that's a principle that you can apply to your life. You don't have to have it all figured out, but with God with you and his love, you can do all things through Christ. Okay? So God doesn't want us to shrink back in fear because fear causes one to retreat, but faith will propel you forward. So I want to talk to you about Timothy. And I don't know how deep I'm supposed to go on this, so I'm going to be really listening for the Lord because I've been praying about this. Timothy was called into the ministry, and God gave him this church. And he gave him a poppin' church, like a church that was filled with people. And um, actually, Sandy was with me when we heard this sermon preached. I heard it preached by Rick Renner, and it was an amazing... Uh, I was going through a lot of fear back then when I heard this, and it really helped me. But um, this church was just really going through some changes. 
as there was persecution beginning to really come up on the rise. Christians were starting to die. And what happened was is people started deflecting from the church. They started getting out of there. They didn't want to be associated with Christianity because they didn't want to die. And here's, you know, Timothy. He's in there, and he's like, okay, so I'm abandoned now. All my church people are leaving, and here I am left holding the bag to figure this out. God, where are you? And at this point, he had become worried, anxious, sick at his stomach, having all these physical symptoms that worry and stress and anxiety had pulled on him because he allowed himself to get into fear. He didn't manage his mind. He didn't take his thoughts captive. He didn't apply everything that he'd been preaching to everybody to do and to live because sometimes you forget your faith when you're in fear, right? So Paul hears of this, and he writes to him, and he encourages him, and he says, look, recall your faith. How did you start believing? Remember that I laid hands on you, and I gave you, I laid hands, and you got these gifts, and these gifts are the gifts that you're operating in. Stir up the gift that's in you. Stir up your faith, right? Because it's hard to get yourself stirred up when you've been a train wreck over, you know, emotions and feelings for a minute, right? And that's what's happened to Timothy. He's forgot who he is. However, when God tells you something, you can't fade it. So this is the scripture, 2 Timothy 1.7. For God did not give you a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving, and a cringing and fawning fear. It's shrinking back. But he has uh, given us a spirit of power and of love. I can't read my own handwriting, sorry and a (laughs) calm, and a well-balanced mind, discipline, and self-control. I don't usually use the AMPC um, version, but I like what it says because timidity is the same thing as fear, and it, but it gives a better understanding of the shrinking back, and in not going forward and doing the thing that God had called Timothy to do, and he's saying, reminding him of this scripture, and this scripture, we can apply it in our life right now, where are you shrinking back that you need to apply this scripture? And this scripture is basically telling us, or telling Timothy, but it, we're going to apply it, that spirit of fear is not from God. I did not give you a spirit of fear. So why are you toying with it? Why are you allowing it? Why are you playing with it? Why are you entertaining it? Why are you acting as if it's going to go away? Because it's not. You have to be proactive and keep an eye on it and watch and and pray that you don't fall into temptation when fear tries to come against you. It's not a sin to feel fear or to get afraid and you feel that um, when you have the wrong thoughts come in your mind, okay, you're going to feel things because those feelings invoke, those thoughts invoke feelings. But the idea is, is that you go forward anyway and do what you know is right to do and confront it. Um, So God wants us to know that we have a spirit of power. And I want to talk to you about the spirit of power. It's dunamis. It's explosive power. Sandy calls it the tornado. And it's like a force of nature that you can't stop. And that's in you. You have a force of nature that can't be stopped residing in you. I don't know how to harness that kind of power where I'm at right now. But I need to learn if I'm going to go forward, right? I know how to operate to the point of where God has me, but if I'm going to go forward and the enemy's trying to come against me right now to intimidate me and to stop me, I've got to learn going forward what I'm going to do with the Lord and how I'm going to handle things and how much more watchful I need to be so that I can keep going forward. <clears throat> Same for you guys. Because a lot of you can't stir yourselves up when you're outside of these doors by yourself. You can come in, you can get a message, you can have a friend encourage you and build you up and tell you everything you need and you're okay. But the minute something happens and you're by yourself, you're falling apart. And the same thing happens to me in certain places too. I'm not, I'm not judging and I'm not alone. You guys understand exactly what I'm talking about. But the Lord says, the enemy wants to use fear to put your fire out. And he wants you to stir up your faith and take that poker and get in that that fireplace with those embers and stroke that fire and let that passion begin to get developed again, that that faith to overcome that fear. You've got to 
praise the Lord. You've got to thank the Lord. You've got to recall your faith. What has he called you to do? Why are you struggling with the fear? Where's the root? Why are you allowing it? What changed? You've got to take an inventory of your thought life. Are you just letting your mind run all over the place and you've been in fear for so long you don't even remember how to get out of it? Because those are the things that the Lord said, you can, the, he gives us discipline and self-control so that nothing will have mastery over us. If he's got the spirit of power living in us, then that works with our self-control and our discipline to overcome the mind games that are in here that the enemy tries to bring. Amen. Because any thought that falls into your head that doesn't line up with the word of God is from Satan. Any lie that's bringing darkness that is going on, that's keeping you sick and nauseated, up at night, not knowing what to do, trying to reason things out, that is not from God. You have a spirit of God living in you, and you have a loving Father who has given you the word, who will open up anything to you at any time and reveal truth to you. But you got to take his word. If God didn't give you a spirit of fear, you don't have to have it. And you get to man your temple. You get to man the thoughts that come into your head. You don't have to think everything that falls into your head. You can say, nope, that's not from God. Nope, that doesn't line up from God. I'm not thinking it. It may look real. It may feel real. It may have an appearance of being real, but it's fear. It's a lie. God, what's the truth? And then you have to look at the truth and be willing to submit to it because it says in 2 Corinthians 10:5. <clears throat> that inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself against the true knowledge of God, we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ. It has to submit to Jesus. And what that means is you have to say, I don't believe that lie. I believe the truth no matter what my situation looks like, no matter if it's manifested in my present situation or not, I believe. That's the economy of faith. You have to believe it before you see it. And when you do, that thing has to flee. We have passive minds, and this is what happens when you have a passive mind. Pastor, you could come. I'm almost finished. A passive mind is a mind that just lets the garbage fill up in our head. It doesn't fight the, the bad thoughts with God's thoughts. It doesn't take them captive. And when you open the door for the enemy, he's going to bring more and more and more. But you get to decide, and all you have to do to be free is decide to stop thinking those things and start thinking God's truth. And you're free indeed, because he who the Son of God has set free is free indeed. Okay? But the devil is crafty, and he wants to use your mind as a garbage dump because if he can control your thoughts, he can control your life, and he can prevent you from accomplishing God's will. And that's what he wants to do is he wants to take your fire out. Examine your thoughts. Compare them to the word of God. If you need to talk to someone that knows the Bible a little bit better than you, there's plenty of people in this church that can help you. What causes you to run in torment and in fear? That's the thing the Lord wants to deal with tonight. So I want to ask you to open your heart to the Lord, and I'm going to have you stand, and I'm going to pray with you, and then we're going to open the altar. The Bible says in John 3:16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God comes to give you life abundantly to the full till it overflows. If you're tired of death and destruction in your thought life, I want you to give it to the Lord, and I want you to receive life that Believing in him is what you need, and believing in the truth of his word is what's going to set you free. But the only way you do that is if you actually get into the word and start taking it for yourself and not for somebody else. Believing it for you. God loves you. You have it messed up so bad that he can't make a way for you. He said, I loved you so much I gave my son for you. That's how much I love you, and I can never take back my love because that means I wouldn't be who I say I am. 
If you feel afraid and you run from God and not to him, this is a time to come and rededicate your heart to the Lord, and the altar is open for that. If you need prayer for a certain thing that fear keeps just operating in and you want someone to pray with you, we'll pray with you. But I'm going to pray right now. Father God, you heard this message because you helped me put it together. And you know what each person here needs and you are faithful. Lord, reveal yourself to us in a new way. Show us just how much you love us. Show us just how present you are. Help us to become more aware of who you are and what your son did for us. Make it so real to us that we never explain it away and that we don't run from you anymore, but we run to you. We pray that fear would have no place, that we would be completely set free from fear, that you would perfect us from the inside out with your love, that he who the Son of God has set free is free indeed, and that fear would not be able to dictate to us who we are in Christ that we would become masters over fear and not mastered by fear in the name of Jesus. We ask you to rise up our faith on the inside of us and help us to live it out, real true faith that you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen.